to Ukraine, probably the most underrated travel destination in Eastern Europe. And today I will explain to you just how cheap it is to travel there and why you should do it now. Let's get right into it. How cheap is the crane? Really? First of all, I'm gonna introduce myself real quick. My name is Danny. If you're new to the channel, I'm a travel and fitness vlogger. And before we jump into the video, a quick shout out to the language star. This is the guy who today provided the visuals for this video in form of drone footage. Make sure to check him out as well. Link is in the description box below. Let's go. And over like the last six months of traveling, I've noticed that in Ukraine is a very special situation going on and for you, for somebody who wants to travel places, see places, this might be very interesting. And before I thought Ukraine is just a good deal, it's nothing special, but now I know that it is and in this video I want to explain you why. I'm gonna cover the major cost that somebody has who's traveling to a place like uh, eating out, accommodation, free time activities, groceries and other services that you need to have if you come into a new place. I'm gonna include a few statistics to compare Ukraine to other countries in Europe but overall globally to the world. So I would say overall in Ukraine there are three major cities that could be seen as a popular tourist destination and that's gonna be Kiev, Lviv and Odessa. If you have been to any other city and you enjoyed it, let us know in the comments below why you should go there, what you can do there. But these are gonna be free and cities that I'm majorly gonna talk about. I would say let's jump right into it with eating out. If you come to a new place, to a new country, you want to experience the local cuisine. And in many places, especially in Europe, that can cost you some money. If you're in trouble on a budget or you're traveling for a longer time like I do, this can be a factor. But in Ukraine, the prices are pretty crazy, I gotta say. And let me give you a few examples. So first of all, in Odessa, you have a very traditional and also very tasty meal like pelmeni, which are basically dumplings. We paid around 350 to $4. In the Lviv, which is, in my opinion, even a little bit cheaper than Odessa, we had ribs for around $350, $4 and a very decent portion. So for one person, more than enough, for sure. And just to compare it to maybe Europe, to Germany, we often go out to the restaurant, to the Italian restaurant called Vapiano. And to eat out at Vapiano in Germany, you would pay like 8 to 11, 12 euro for like a pasta dish. In Ukraine, we pay for the exact same dish at the exact same chain of a piano. We paid also, I, think, I believe, four dollars. This is just how crazy it is. It is really like one third or even less. And the crazy thing is you get really the exact same service. The service at the Papiano, the only difference was that they checked you out and asked for what type of meal you want to have in Ukrainian or Russian. Depends on where you are, Kiev, Lviv, Odessa. And just to prove this point a little bit more, and maybe before you have heard of the Big Mac Index. Well, basically this is an informal index published by The Economist that is supposed to say how high the cost of living in the country is, besides other factors. And let me tell you one thing. The Big Mac in Ukraine is the cheapest in the whole world. And when I looked that up, I was pretty amazed. Because I've been in other countries in Asia, Kuala Lumpur, and Thailand. It seemed pretty inexpensive, but now that I have the statistics in front of my eyes. And this price point is pretty much reflected by everything else in Ukraine. Let's keep on. The second factor for today is going to be transportation. And I would say transportation, again, is such a thing that kind of reflects, you know, the other prices of everything else as well. The transportation in Ukraine is ridiculously inexpensive. And I would say let's start out like with public transportation, maybe a metro. If you're gonna be in Kiev, you're gonna pay 20 cents. And this is pretty much as cheap as it gets in a whole world. A statistic again for that that I just looked up and really amazed me right here for you. So as you see all the way at the top of the Scandinavian countries, and if you're gonna scroll down all the way, we're gonna find Kiev. A public train in Odessa is actually just like 10 US cents or something like that. If you just want to grab a taxi, therefore I would just recommend you getting an app from there. You pay somewhere between like two and five dollars for like a 15 to 30 minute ride all over the city. But one thing that you have to keep in mind that is maybe a little bit different than in other cities is that the cars that provide taxi services are very often extremely beaten up. Like, all right, so now let's head over to accommodation. And I would say this is a point that is 
not extremely cheap. This is probably the only point of everything that I'm going to mention in this video that is a little bit more expensive than in, for example, Thailand or other Southeast Asian countries, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes as well. I would say accommodation in a very popular city like Odessa, the city center, a nice room, let's say a hotel room, is going to start between like 15 and 20 dollars, which is definitely very inexpensive. But in Southeast Asia, during the off season, we have experienced prices like 12, 13 dollars for extremely nice and big rooms with a pool and everything. So I would say, in terms of that, also very inexpensive, probably one of the best places. So pretty much in any other European cities where the prices start out at like 40, 50 dollars in Ukraine, you're gonna get like the top notch rooms, which is pretty cool for sure. Just a quick point that is um, maybe also worth mentioning if you're interested groceries so uh, fruits vegetables meat eggs milk uh, animal products all of them are very inexpensive the reason for that is that pretty much everything that they sell is locally harvested so apples very fresh usually they are organic they don't use too much pesticides also if you're just gonna drive by streets maybe outside of Odessa outside of Lviv very often there are like street vendors who are selling their own fruits definitely also cool to know cool to keep in mind you're gonna encounter that in Ukraine a lot all right the next point that really amazed me as well were SIM cards. If you get to a new place, you know, you need Google Maps, you need a connection, maybe to keep in touch with your friends or whatever. And this day and age, to have data on your phone can be extremely useful, especially if you come to a place that you don't know. And uh, my girlfriend and I, we bought a SIM cards with four gigabytes of uh, mobile data. I believe the provider was called Life. And we paid, um, I think, 350 or like 450. American dollars. So I decided let's look it up on the internet. How cheap is it really? So comparison global and mobile data and you can guess it. Let's scroll again all the way down and there you see it. So again, there's like no comparison in no other European city. It's that inexpensive. Let's get into the fun stuff. Free time activities. So let's take as an example Odessa. I'm gonna make a separate video for that for sure, like how to travel to Odessa. But in Odessa, the seaport city, which is located at the Black Sea, you obviously can go. Uh, there are many attractions like aquapark, bowling, or let's say very many museums in Kiev if you're interested in, in the cultural side. Um, I'm pretty sure in every city they have museums. Let me break down the prices of that for you as well. I would say let's start out with, for example, bowling. In Kiev, we went bowling and we did that in Odessa as well. So in Kiev, regular price, regular time, I believe it was the afternoon, maybe a little bit cheaper than the evening, you know how it is. And I believe we paid like 60 grivnia, which is that much in US dollars, so pretty much less than 2 euro for half an hour of bowling. Uh, Aqua Park in Odessa. To get into the Aqua Park for half a day, my girlfriend and I paid... Um, a little over 10 euro, I believe it was like 350 grivnia or something and I put the price again here in US dollars. And if you are into cultural sites, you want to know something about the country you go to, about its history. For example, in Kiev we have been in the Chernobyl Museum, a museum I thought it was very interesting and it, was, it, is really cool, it is a really cool museum, so definitely recommendation for that is going out. And there the admission price was basically 5 grivnia, which is like 15, 20 US cents. And that is crazy. Let's talk about alcohol. And as you can imagine, Eastern European city, alcohol is not going to be an issue. A very inexpensive, probably top five countries in the world with the cheapest alcohol. And the thing that surprised me is that at restaurants they don't have that high of a surcharge to either buy the like the alcohol at grocery store or at the restaurant. Because often, for example, I was grabbing a beer and I've noticed that it's only like 20% more expensive in the restaurant than in a grocery store. Probably a big factor for you if you are into eating out and experiencing the culture in that type of way. All right, so I would say I give you enough examples to like roughly get my idea across to you. But you may think like, well, it sounds very inexpensive and pretty cool. But like, what is the difference to other, maybe Eastern European cities that are also not that expensive or let's say Southeast Asia? Everybody at the moment is hyping. But what I've noticed is that there is a huge difference, not in the prices, but in what you get for your money. But what I mean by that is in terms of, for example, eating out. In Thailand, you can get a pad thai for starting at like $152, extremely inexpensive. 
any other dish like three dollars four dollars but the way that it's gonna look like you're gonna be somewhere like on the street it's gonna be like or a hawker center but in Ukraine for the money that I've mentioned before you get the exact same service and another huge difference is that a country like Thailand for example is very geared towards tourism what that means is if you're gonna be like in the more touristy places with beaches with nice temples for example you're gonna encounter a lot tons and tons of other tourists and most of the services are gonna be geared towards serving you know Europeans Americans and I've really noticed that if you're gonna come to Ukraine you're gonna notice that uh, in terms of eating out like there are the places are pretty much always full. The restaurants that you are gonna go to, the free time activities, the bowling, the aqua parks, you're gonna see a lot of locals actually going there. But that's also a point that we need to talk about is that the fact that Ukraine is so inexpensive, it's directly connected to the fact that the average income is very low and also globally compared, you know, a lot of people are struggling. So the conclusion is there are other places that offer also very good value. But just from my personal experience and also looking at the statistics, Ukraine is in a situation right now, if you're a tourist from overseas, this is probably the way to go to get so, so much for so little money. Okay, and the purpose of this video is to just put Ukraine for other people on the map. Because a lot of people that I met during my travels, they were like, yeah, I've heard of Ukraine before, but never in terms of a travel destination. And I want to put Ukraine on the map for many people. But what I also have maybe to mention is that my origin is Ukrainian. I've been born in Ukraine, but I lived all of my life in Germany. So, so take my perspective with, so to say, a grain of salt, because maybe I'm in some way biased. But again, I have to mention before, like I've been a few times in Ukraine, didn't do like too much traveling there, just visiting family. I just thought like, yeah, it's inexpensive. But after seeing so much, so many different places, I've realized that what's going on there other people need to experience it as well and from the footage that you have seen in the video from the things that I've mentioned you probably can get a good idea of what you can experience there if you have any questions about traveling to Ukraine leave them in the comments below and as I said I'm gonna make a video series out of that a video on how to travel to Odessa and how to travel to Aviv is coming in just in the next few days so be on the lookout for that as well me personally I'm at the moment in Australia in a few weeks we're heading out again we're going to the Philippines to maybe China we'll see so definitely consider subscribing Thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one.